Hi you guys, I'm PK10 and this is your first Roblox building tutorial. Um, one person has asked me for this, his name is Ackley, A-C-C-L-A-A on Roblox. Um, I figured it would be useful for a lot of people as well if they knew how to build one on Roblox because it is a question I get asked a lot, how do I build? You can't really tell people, but you can show them. Um, now, for some reason, this screen recording software, which is a new one, Snag It 10, I'm getting a free trial, doesn't let me open Studio, but the first thing you need is you need to go to Start Menu, then All Programs, and get this far. It doesn't let me do anything. Start Menu, there you go, All Programs, then click Roblox, and then go to Roblox Studio. Now, it doesn't let me do much when this, so I'll pause the video and come back when Roblox Studio has opened. Alright, I'm back on Studio. Um, as I said, it takes ages to load with this screen recording software for some reason. Um, the first thing you need to know is to always use Studio. A lot of people would go into their place, they go My Roblox Places, um, click Build. As you notice, with Studio open, you have Edit. You have this edit option, which you should always use when using places. If you press build, the environment that you're building in is always running. Um, it's you can never port. You can pause the physics in it, um, but you can't pause the scripts or anything. It's always running. So if you try and put a brick in midair, it will start. It will just fall down. You can't move the camera very well or anything. So you should always use Roblox Studio. This means you can't use tools, but there's plenty of tools in Roblox Studio for you to um, compensate for that. Um, in this, in these tutorials, I will not be pressing edit, which you can do. If you press edit on one of your places, it'll just come up with the place in Roblox Studio. But in these tutorials, I'll be c creating a new place. So, um, click this blank piece of paper. It'll probably be here for you, but for some reason, mine reset. I'm pressing new, or you can just press Control and N, and you click it, and it takes ages to load for the screen recording software, and you get this new, completely blank place with a nice little sky background. Now the first thing you need to do is to insert a base plate for otherwise your whenever your guy will spawn it will fall off the edge. In this tutorial I'll only be teaching you the very very basics of building. Um, so let's get this up. Um, you, first of all to get any brick into your place you're gonna need to insert a um, uh, brick, uh, the toolbox, that's what it's called. Um, it's this button here. It used to be different. It might, used to be this little insert bar here. It's now these two spanners up here. Um, hopefully the screen recording software isn't too laggy, so when I move my mouse it won't like stutter everywhere. You click this toolbox and click on the brick you want. In this case we want a base plate, so we're clicking one of these flat ones. I'm going to use this blue plastic plate. It will appear. This is the drag tool. Move parts. You click on it, you can move it around if there's a another brick in the place. It'll just be a normal drag, so if you move it, click and drag over here, it'll move over there. But if it starts glitching like this and it's not moving, then you can use these move on axes um, arrows which will just move it one by one stud to either side. That's a very simple tool to use. This m dragging usually works except when there's no bricks to drag it onto. Now we've also got this rotate parts, which if you click, press on any of these, they rotate in different directions. This can be useful. I prefer C framing because it can do it much more accurately. This tool isn't that good, but it's very it's useful for um, other stuff. So you can do it both ways as well. Do it one way, then another. Back this way, so I can flip it madly. Let's just go back to normal to start. If I can, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to insert another part. Um, this is the resize parts tool, very simple to use. It will appear with one, two, three, four, five dots around it. One, two, three, four, five, six dots around it. You can resize it anywhere. As we're going to be making a base plate, we want to just resize it very big and flat. So I'm going to do that now. Now we've also got these grid buttons. We won't go through these yet, but I will probably be going through be through them in this tutorial. Um, maybe this manual joints means whenever you connect a brick to the surface, it creates a world object. You don't need to know what any of these stuff is yet. You just need to know that I prefer to have it off. You may not. Basic builders should have them on. 
If you're not basic, turn them off. So for now, we'll leave them on. These tools at the top are exactly the same, but the old version. This is a drag, which does drag. And this is the axis tool, the same as the last one. And this is the resize tool. Now, because it's a base plate, what will happen if we run? Now, in build mode, this if we if we did this, assuming our characters could somehow float in midair, the base plate would end up would just fall straight back down. As if we press this play button up here, which will run the place, we we'll see that the base plate just falls down and then disappears. Um, we can rewind it in studio to get it back. How do we stop that from happening? We need to anchor the part. Now, a lot of you will probably already know this and thinking, I'm not going to watch this tutorial because it's so basic. This tutorial is basic, but it will be, I will be going into in advanced stuff in later tutorials. Um, this anchor tool, is, don't know, it doesn't look like an anchor up here, it's just a little line. <laughs> That's the best I can explain it. But you select the tool, click on a brick. If it has this anchor symbol, not sure if you can see it, it's anchor symbol, it means this brick is not anchored. And if you click on it, it will become anchored. Which means, if, that, if I now press play, it will not move. It will just stay floating in midair. So if I press rewind now... If you now select it, and it, it now comes up with, when you hover over the brick, an anchor tool with um, a circle and a cross through it, that means if you click it again, it will unanchor the brick. Now, for a base plate, we we'll usually want... Um, have you ever had it, if you've made a base plate before, that if you've se selected a brick, we'll insert a brick here. This will be our testing brick for the tutorial. If you zoom out and try and select the brick, you might accidentally select the base plate and you might accidentally drag it off and everything. And the Roblox's undo button doesn't seem to undo drags. Or it does in this case. But if it doesn't, then you, if you don't want that to happen, then you should click the lock tool, prevent selection. If you lock a brick, it means that no one can select it. You can still find it in scripts, just if you're in a building game, then you won't be able to select the brick, which is why you can't just randomly move every single brick in the place, only the bricks that they've allowed you to um, move. And in Studio, you can't accidentally click on it. So if you use the lock, and then they will select the new dragging tools. I say new because these were the old ones. I still use these ones usually, but these ones are probably better. Then we can't click on it, and we can just click on this brick. So that's... The, how to create a base plate that just stays in midair. Now, if I want to... Ah, yes, now I'll go over these grids. Well, first of all, I'll go over basic bricks. To move a brick, you select this drag tool, and this is what the dragging actually does, if it works. Unlike the base plate before, it'll come up with a grid and move the brick along that grid. It can go anywhere out of move, you can position it anywhere, and to rotate the brick you need to press R on your keyboard to rotate the brick that way or you can press T on your keyboard to tilt the brick um, and then you can press R and T in different combinations to make it go up different ways now I'll leave it like this you can also use these buttons up here this will rotate and this will tilt and this will make it go up one, this will go down one but we don't need to go into them because I usually just press R and T now these grids, as you can see when you move this a grid appears on the screen now if you select one fifth stud grid then the grid when you move a brick will appear much smaller let's zoom in, by the way if you're wondering you can move the camera by pressing W, A, S and D right click to turn the camera and zoom in and out with a mouse wheel or by pressing I and O on your keyboard and if you move this the grid will become much smaller and you can move them in much smaller um, positions um, that can be useful if you're creating very small things 
I don't usually use it for big scale models. I don't think anyone does because it's much harder to get it to work properly. But this is good for a very small scale for models such as furniture or something for making it for a house. If you are, you can change this grid off, then the grid will disappear completely. Just have a white square, which means you, it can move it completely freely. Now I never use this, and you, it'll be useful if you're doing very very intricate stuff stuff such as like paintings on the walls or something but it's not really useful for anything else i usually use one for this i'm gonna i'm gonna be using one for the rest of this unless i think we should use one fifth i use these two mainly we don't need to go into any of this stuff now right now we might want to for our base plate do we usually see a blue plastic base plate covered in studs no, we usually see a nice grassy base plate. Well, we should do that today. Now, this is this will be the last parts of this tutorial. I'm going to fill with colour with this tool, this paint bucket. Very simple to use. You click on it, click on the colour. I'm going to choose earth green. Select the brick, and it will now change to this colour. This is very, very simple to use. Now, I can change the material with this tool. It doesn't really look like a material tool. It's more like an atom. But if you click on the arrow, you can see all the materials. So I'm going to select grass. If I select grass and then click on this this brick, it will change to the grassy material if you're wondering how to do that. Now, comes this is this will, this concludes this tutorial.